Hi, my name is Andy Chafin here at the Buddaroo, and I am the assistant instructor of Andre Chris Jacobson, and this is my interview video. My initial interest in ninjutsu slash bujutsu. Um, ever since I was a child, I was always interested in the military, and uh, my family has got heavy connections in the military. My brothers uh, joined the army uh, when I was more little. And uh, I did ROTC when I was in high school, and I've always played, uh, you know, warfare-like games when I was a child. Uh, back when I was uh, a small kid, my dad would take me around on uh, from like a car auction to car auction. I'd be in the van, and I'd be watching videos about you know Desert Storm and military actions within like uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. And I would, that's what I was always interested in. I had a favorite plane since I was like six. The F-15 is one of my favorite jets ever. And it's just, it's always been, it's always been a part of me. I've always played military games. I've always learned anything and everything I can about medieval warfare uh, in Europe, plus uh, also in Asia. Um, it's just always been a huge part of what I am. And um, a friend of mine, Mr. Nick Fisher, uh, one of our black belts. Uh, we were playing around in the backyard of my dad's house one day, and um, he's a bigger guy. And we were wondering what kind of martial art someone of his size could do. And as uh, so we went inside, uh, we were thinking like Russian sambo or something where he just has the stereotype of this large, this large, muscular man. And uh, we were on the internet, just cruising around, and he found uh, her website. And we're living in the middle of like nowhere, Kansas City. I mean, this is flat as hell out here. There ain't nothing to do. And, uh, holy shit, you know, we have a ninjutsu master here in Kansas City, Kansas, recognized by the World Martial Art Hall of Fame. And both of us at the same time said, we got to go check her out. So we signed up for a trial class and latched on. Been here ever since. Me and Sensei for the first time was very interesting. Um... She is a very respectable person. Uh, she lives a life free of judgment, and uh, she does so so that no one can judge her in return. And it is a very fair way of living. And when it comes to her lifestyle, she's very local. She's very free, she's very open-minded. But when it's time to put on the gi and it's time to start to train, there's a side of her that does not it's not easily seen when you look at her face value when she's cruising around out you know, at Walmart or getting a bike to eat, uh, she gets very serious and very strict, and she turns into a civilian drill sergeant. She sets high standards and uh, high expectations for us as students, and she doesn't expect perfection, but she expects us to give it our heart and give it everything that we have. And training is difficult, it is rough, and we've always talked about how ruling it can be. But we believe in the idea that the worst ass whooping they should ever take is here at the Hanbu floor. Because if you can take it here, you can take it anywhere else. And, you know, I, I love being around a person that shares those ideals. Mine and hers relationship has changed over the years uh, very dramatically. Uh, I started off as a grub. Um, you know, when I first started off, everyone was bigger. Everyone was bigger, meaner and more strong, more powerful, and he's some big boys. Uh, honestly though, I mean, these are just average men height and weight, and they're just in shape, because I am of a smaller stature. I am of a lesser weight. So to me, the average size man is a lot bigger than me. <laughs> so with that being the case, uh, starting off, I was a stick. I weighed, I, I was the same height, but I weighed like 40 pounds less. I was like 115 pounds. I looked anorexic. It was scary, it was like a skeleton. And I started off struggling. I started off, you know, hitting those that wall early. I couldn't push my body off the floor. And if I can't push my body off the floor and I weigh 150 pounds, there's no way in the hell I'm gonna be able to compete with someone that's the size of an average man. So I had a long way to go in order to be able to compete with my fellow students. As the years went by and I started gaining more weight and I started getting uh, gaining uh, more skill, I started uh, showing uh, talent at least uh, you know, restricted at first as the having the ability of being able to teach uh, other students, uh, my fellow students, and it's just that's the path that I went along. I uh, started helping out more, I started videotaping more, I started being her uke a lot more. Uh, she um, started having me run more and more things. I started, being, I started running Kihon, I started 
uh, you know, handling, you know, the, some of the internet stuff. I started making the videos and it just, it just slowly grew. So with me being around all the time, it's only natural for our relationship to get tighter. I started looking, uh, you know, towards her when it came to, um, you know, advice about how to live my life. Uh, she imposed a lot of uh, rules on, on me uh, that required me to have to be able to do normal things that normal people have to do when they grow up in order for me to advance through the ranks. Uh, we discovered that we had a lot of things in common and we just uh, slowly started hanging out more and more on a friend level just as much as on the professional level. And it just went from there. I mean, today I can consider her my best friend and she is someone to hang out with every single day and more than just, you know, videos and, you know, training, but we also, you know, eat lunch together all the time. We hang out, we see movies and, you know, I, I enjoy it. I like the training here. Um, initially, it was uh, it was it was a good place to get in shape. Uh, the physical requirement in order to be able to advance was was huge. It was heavy, and um, we sparred a heck of a lot. And it just it, it taught me it taught me how to be able to handle myself and how how to maybe use my body. And that's something that I really appreciate. It's 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 not watered down at all. It's not theoretical martial arts. Uh, um, it's it's intense. I mean, with that being with that being the case, I mean there is. There's a reason why we don't have kids' classes, and it's you have to be able to f realistically defend yourself. There is no such thing as an eight-year-old black belt here. Um, I do know that the mission school that they do have a kids' program, but that was because um, it was a kids' program that they grandfathered into the current curriculum before they uh, converted over into a Buddhist school. Uh, along with that, though, is I know they also t uh, teach other martial arts at that exact same school. So, but you know that's Mr. Delgado's decision, and if that's what he wanted, does that's fine. But you know, here at the Hambu, I mean, we do not take kids for a reason. I mean, it, it is. If you ever need an art to make you feel like you're doing something practical, you know, Buddharu is one of them. I believe it is, um, in the sense that where I can understand it, I can see it. You know, um, I'm not, you know, saying I'm, profe I'm a professional, a historical researcher, but you can see uh, the militant mindset, the militant movement. You can see the humanity in the arts that we train in. Uh, we train in seven different martial arts, and it's all tied underneath one banner, underneath Buddha and those seven individual arts looking at their histories, how they move, why they move. You can see the practical movement and why it is as it is. There isn't as much as mysticism is tied around ninjutsu, as much as legend is tied around you know, awesome samurai. I mean, they're still human. And you know, you hear the saying that you know, warfare hasn't changed, but the tools have. It's, it's definitely true. You can, you can just see it and just the movement alone. So when we're watching theoretical martial artists talk about the stuff that we're doing, there's a lot on their end that is missed because there are some things that you'll realize have to change when you do them hands-on in a realistic setting. Small things change. Small things have to be added. Small things have to be removed. And that is something I wish that more people would realize is that when it's time to actually act, Nothing is stagnant, and you need to be trained in a varied sense to where it's always different, and you have to be used to the idea that the situation that you're going to go into is not what you planned. It is going to be different. It's not going to be what you expect, and you have to adapt, and that's something you have to train. Adapting to a situation is something that you have to train. It's not something that you can understand and then just go into without previous experience because winging it can only get you so far. Buddha itself is not Koru. It is uh, it's Sensei's vision uh, from her 30 some odd years of martial art training on what she feels uh, is the idea of traditional samurai and uh, ninjutsu with uh, the Gendai Henka Waza at, you know, twist and aspect on it to make it work in today. Cause that's, that's something that we're huge about is that we take traditional concepts and ideas and we make them work now. So, you know, we do have Takeda Bujitsu in our Jiu-Jitsu system. You know, uh, Kokuro Kenpo is a modern art. It is, it is a street fighting, more modern art. 
but you take a look at the the Nipo Taijutsu, uh, the Nipo Taijutsu per, uh, perspective. I mean, that's that's got traditional ties. So when people are trying to say that you know that that Buderu is not a Koru school, uh, that's correct. Buderu is not a Koru school. It was made back in 2004. I mean, it's only 10 years old. But we do train in traditional Koru arts. My goal in the training of Buderu, it's, uh, it's divided between what I want and what I know should happen. Um, but of course, what I want is to be the ultimate badass. It'd be great. I want to be able to, you know, with my size and weight, I want to be able to, you know, deadlift 400 pounds. I mean, I just, I just, I just want to be able to leap from tree to tree like fucking you know, spider monkey. You know, I want, I want to be Superman. I want to be able to, I want to be able to, you know maybe free someone in their tracks using my super cold breath. I mean, regardless, I mean, that's that's what I want. So with that being the case here, I mean, to be the ultimate fighter, the ultimate warrior, uh, to be the ultimate competitor, to, uh, to be the one that uh, realistically understands uh, the ideas and values the best, uh, practical application, I mean, that would be great. To be able to actually apply every single traditional idea and concept in a modern sense and pull it off flawlessly, you know, Batman style, it'd be great. Uh, but, you know, I got a way to go. So, uh, realistically, a uh, better teacher. I'd like to be a better teacher. I want to be able to um, not only train uh, people on how to do kata, how to be able to you know, open their minds, how to see things in a different light, how to, uh, you know, how to be able to move their body, how to be able to whoop some ass. But I'd also like to be able to lead people down a actual open um, path, uh, not spiritually, but psychologically, you know, I'd like I'd like people to I'd like to teach people to to, to get out of their own way, to, to to break out of their shell, to take some risks, to to grow as individuals, to um, to further their lifestyles, to motivate them to be the best uh, person that they possibly want to be, whether in any direction, whatever it is that they want to be, and you know that for for the immediate at the immediate level, that's what I would like is I would like to to be able to inspire. Now, um, it's something we talk about a little bit, but it's not something that we ever touch on uh, at, at a serious level. I mean, she 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 keeps it separate between what she does in her daily life and then when it comes to training. Like I said earlier, I mean, she is a split between the most liberal, normal living person I've ever known in my life and the most strict, conservative martial artist I've ever known in my life too. I mean, she she is that you know, she is that she, that alpha and omega aspect. And with that being the case, she in a lot of ways uh, protects us from having to deal with that side of her lifestyle. And that's her lifestyle. It's what she does. She enjoys it. She loves it. It's a part of who she is. And she doesn't force it on us at all. I mean, we've I'm her best friend. I'm, I am one person, I, I'm one of the few people that hang around her the most in my life. And I am not going to convert over to Wiccan. I can just tell you that right now. She is the spiritual, free-natured individual. I am an agnostic atheist. Um, I, I reserve my judgment. I reserve my thought. Um, I, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. I mean, and anyone who thinks otherwise, who thinks, you know, that we're a cult, or that, you know, she is a bad influence on kids, like, she's running around naked all the time or something, that's just completely stupid. And it's not realistic, and it's just a part of their, their, their hateful fantasy, because it just, it does nothing but justify, you know, what it is they think is right and wrong. And it's, it's a shame. It is a shame. But... When it's time to do martial arts, it's time to do martial arts. And it is the martial art path that will help us on our journey. And it is the martial art path that will prevent us from being cowards. And it is the martial art path that will make us better people. To give us a shot, um, we train hard, uh, we train well, uh, we train all the time. And uh, here at the Hanbu, we are a close-knit family. And um, these are individuals that I care about. Um, it's not a paycheck, nor do I want to run their lives, neither does Sensei. Um, 
you know, and I think people would have fun training with us if they just came in through the door. Uh, we've had a lot of individuals come in from other martial arts, especially other ninjutsu martial arts, and um, they have admitted that they have enjoyed their stay here with us more than anything else they've ever done in their lifetime regarding their martial art uh, life. And that is, when I hear that, that is something that I, that brings, that brings a smile across my face and makes me, makes me glad because that's, they, to hear something like that, just, it verifies the idea that we are doing something correct, that we are doing something right and we are doing it for the positive and for the greater good. I think Anshu, myself, and the Buddha organization can help others um, if they just come check us out, if they come train with us. You know, as long as they uh, curb check the ego, uh, you know, as long as we curb check our ego, which, I mean, uh, make it make it ego neutral. <laughs> and we just train with the, you just let the results speak for themselves. I mean, uh, as an organization, I hope that we do grow. And as we grow, I want to be able to maintain uh, the tight-knit family atmosphere that we have currently. Um, we are growing. We've, this last Deco Missile, we've had the most we've ever had ever. Um, we've had, uh, we're having international schools pop up everywhere. Uh, Canada's got their, they're, they, they're, loving, they're loving the training and they're growing exponentially. Uh, Michigan group is still going strong. Uh, you know, we're, we're getting a, a school sit down in Tennessee. I mean, so it's, it's it, you know, we're growing, we're getting bigger. And you know, the problem with growing and getting bigger is that the larger and larger you get, you know, if you, one, you have to make sure that the discipline is maintained. So you know, that requires you know, regular checkups with the, the satellite schools and to make sure everything's still going strong. And two, it's just a large part of that is necessary in order to be able to maintain the tight knit family atmosphere that we have here at the Hombu. I mean, the last thing we want to do is grow like, as like a exceptionally large ninjutsu organization without discipline, and you know, say that you know, Sensei is the last living grandmaster of ninjutsu ever, and just let our students run rampant across the board. You know, and just let them say whatever they want, you know, unchecked, you know. <laughs>don't want to be a part of an organization uh, that just studies. I want to be a part of an organization that does. And um, when it comes to the old ninjutsu tools, the old classical samurai bujutsu tools, I want practical skill in all aspects, all of those aspects. Um, of course there are some aspects that are due to laws, like you know samurai headhunting and all that crap. That it's just to be understood, you know, we're not going to go over that house right there and chop off their head so we have a head trophy, so we can say that we're a classical bujutsu organization. I'm being, use common sense here, people. When it comes to climbing, when it comes to warfare, when it comes to how to use a sword, when it comes to um, squad and platoon um, movement and company movement, and I'm using modern terms here, when it comes to warfare, I want to be good at warfare. and. With that, with today, where there's a lack of classical warfare, and where we take the classical warfare, we make a modern twist on how to use it in a survival situation of today, that is something that I want. And that is a huge goal. It's a, it's a large aspiration, and it, I think it is a aspiration worth um, achieving and worth seeking after. And since then, since I'm always around, um, you know, mine and her's relationship got to a point that where it's just we started being friends. 